I think we have a clear winner. Instant Pot or Crock Pot. Today we're doing the ultimate showdown to see which appliance cooks the better pot roast. I'm Lisa Child and you're watching Tried, Tested and True Instant Pot Cooking where I share with you Instant Pot inspirations and ways to feel more confident using your Instant Pot. Okay, if you have watched my five things I never make in my Instant Pot video, which I'll link up here or up here somewhere like that, you know that I actually don't like making roast in my Instant Pot. So today I thought we'd do a side-by-side -side taste test to decide who reigns supreme. For this taste off, I am going to do the exact same recipe in both the Instant Pot and the Crock Pot. The only thing that's going to be different is the cook time and the appliance, obviously. So for this experiment, we're first going to start out making our Crock Pot roast, which is going to cook for eight to 10 hours. About an hour and a half or two hours before this is supposed to be done, we will start the instant pot roast and then they'll be done at the same time and we'll do a blind taste test. We'll do a blind husband taste test and Brett and I will be able to see which one tastes better, looks better, and is the winner. To make it even more fair, we're going to use the exact same meat for both recipes. They even came in the same package. I got a two pack of chuck roast from Costco and they were both the exact same size, so I just use one for the Instant Pot and one for the crock pot. The ingredients and quantities are the same for both recipes in the crock pot and the Instant Pot, so this is what you'll need. A two and a half pound chuck roast, two cups of beef broth, one onion chopped or sliced, one tablespoon of kosher salt and a teaspoon of pepper, one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce, one bay leaf, a quarter cup of flour, one teaspoon garlic powder, and about three tablespoons of olive oil. Let's start off with our crock pot roast. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take our meat. It's just beef chuck pot roast, and each piece is gonna be about two and a half pounds. When you make roast, you wanna get a good piece of meat that has a lot of good marbling throughout. Now, marbling is when we have lots of these fat striations all throughout. So you can see all this white stuff running throughout the whole piece of meat. That is where the fat is gonna melt down and then make it super, super tender, and that's what we want in our roast. I'm going to take one piece of our meat and just put it onto a little cutting board and then we'll put this in the fridge to make our instant pot roast later. Okay, while we are seasoning our pot roast, I am going to turn a cast iron skillet or just like a large skillet on medium high heat to get nice and hot. We are going to sear this piece of meat so it has a really nice coloring on the outside. We're going to lock in those juices. It's going to be a huge difference versus if we just put this whole thing in the crock pot as is. Let's start out with the seasoning. So I have a quarter cup of flour, just regular flour, and one teaspoon of garlic powder, and one about one tablespoon of kosher salt, and we will add in some fresh cracked pepper. Just a good amount. Okay, now that we have our seasoning mix, I'm just going to mix this all up together. The flour will help to thicken the juices and just lock everything in really well. I like using the garlic powder versus fresh garlic in this recipe because if garlic cooks too long, it can get a little bit bitter and so using in the garlic powder works really nice. So we've got our flour mixture seasoning. We're just gonna put it all over our roast just like this. We've got our seasoning mix and we just spread it all over the roast. And then you can use your hands or a spoon or a fork. I like to just kind of spread it in so it sticks onto the meat. You can see this roast is pretty thick. It's about three inches thick. And we want to season on both sides and all the edges too. 
that's why it's nice to do it like on a little cutting board like this so then you can try and contain the mess. So now we're gonna do the other side. And if you have a little bit of this left over, that's totally fine. Just coat it liberally all over. And we can see that our cast iron over here is nice and steamy and hot. It's getting perfect for this. We want the heat to be high enough where it will lock in those juices sear without really cooking the meat. We just wanna get that beautiful coloring on the outside because that will give us a lot more depth of flavor in our finished product. Now that our pan is nice and hot, we are going to add a couple tablespoons of olive oil, just like that. Then we're gonna drop our meat in. We don't want to use like a butter because that will melt, so I like using olive oil for this. Swirl that around until it gets nice and shiny. I'm saying nice a lot, huh? <laughs> okay, and then we're just gonna put this straight in. You can even turn up the heat a little bit if you want. And then we're just gonna let this sear on both sides, on all sides, for about four to five minutes each. And make sure your vents are on because the fire alarm might go off. Let's flip this over. You can tell, oh, it's got nice coloring. This looks beautiful. So we want nice round bits all over. We want some of that fat to start rendering down. Oh, I'm so excited, it smells so good. And don't worry about these, they just look a little bit burned. No big deal, it will all melt away and it will be perfect when we eat it. Now that we have our meat seared, I'm just gonna put it in our slow cooker and set it aside while we make the onion mixture. So I'm just gonna take this whole big chunk of meat, oh, it smells delicious. Put it straight into the slow cooker like that. Next, we're gonna deglaze the pan drippings to pour over the roast so then it can just marinate and cook low and slow with that beautiful flavor for eight to 10 hours. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add an onion right into the hot mixture or the hot pan. We're not really trying to cook these onions, we're just trying to get them to lift up all that great flavor off the bottom of the pan and to give them, you know, just an extra flavor. And you can cut this onion into slices if you want long strings of onion. I just like to dice mine because it's just easier in the end. After the onions have sauteed for just a couple minutes, we are going to add one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce and two cups of beef broth. Beautiful. After you deglaze with the beef broth, you wanna be sure to kind of scrape off the bottom of the pan so then you can get all of those brown bits off, all that flavor lift off the bottom of the pan, and then we will pour it all over the meat. Just remember, this is really hot, so use some oven mitts when you do this. But we are just going to pour this yummy mixture right over the top of the roast. Oh, it smells Amazing. There we go. And then I also like to add one bay leaf into the roast. We'll just kind of dunk that in there. And then I like to keep some of the onions on top of the meat and some of the onions in the broth. But we want the meat to be most about halfway submerged so it can just cook down and become amazing. Let's put the lid on this and we will take it over to the slow cooker and cook it for eight to 10 hours on low. Also, if you like to add vegetables to your pot roast, you can totally add carrots, celery, potatoes, anything that you want into the roast. If you like them really, really soft, you can put them in at the same time you cook your meat. Or if you don't want them as soft, just put them in about halfway through cooking in the crock pot. And then for the instant pot, cook it for 10 minutes less and then open up the instant pot, add your vegetables and then cook for 10 more minutes and then do the full natural pressure release. And then you'll have a wonderful full meal pot roast in the instant pot or crock pot. 
Okay, now it has been six hours since we started our crock pot roast. It's cooking right now, and so we have two hours left until it has been cooking for eight hours. And so I wanted to start on my instant pot roast. This will take about an hour and a half, so I wanted to just give us some leeway, but let's get started with the exact same recipe in our Instant Pot. First thing I'm gonna do is set our Instant Pot on saute. Now this is one feature that the Instant Pot totally wins over the crock pot is that the saute feature is built right into it. It would be so awesome if the crock pot had that, but that's one thing I love about my Instant Pot. So first we are going to just turn this on saute mode so it gets nice and hot while we season our meat. We're gonna take the same seasoning mixture that we made earlier, which is a quarter cup of flour, one tablespoon of kosher salt, fresh cracked pepper, and one teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm just gonna put this on the same cut of meat that we saw earlier, and I'm gonna dredge the whole thing on both sides. I feel like we're just like, I'm having deja vu right now because we just did the same thing six hours earlier. Oh, this is a fat piece of meat. Oh, okay. Now do the other side. And we wanna get the sides as well. So we'll do all of that. Just kind of pat it into the meat like this. You can use your fingers if, or a spoon if you want, but I like to just do it with the tongs I'm gonna use anyways. Now that it's on that side, we'll do the edges. I like doing it on just a plastic cutting board. It makes it really easy and safe so we're not doing it on wood when we're working with raw meat. Okay, this looks nice and dredged. Now that our Instant Pot says hot, we're ready to sear our meat. So we're just gonna add a couple tablespoons of olive oil. and then sear our meat for about three or four minutes per side. Now this is a big piece of meat, so I'm gonna have to kind of round it in there, but here we go. And we will just let that sear on all sides for a couple minutes. It's been searing for a couple minutes. We're gonna flip it over onto the other side. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, baby. Yeah, that looks absolutely perfect. So crispy, golden. It's gonna be so good. It smells and sounds like it's ready to come out. It's been searing on all sides. Okay, now we've got this beautiful piece of meat. It's seared all the way around. So good, it smells delicious. And it makes that beautiful like cooking smell and sound. The first time I taught my freshman college roommate how to cook, and I taught her how to preheat the pan, she just said, wow, cooking sounds. And I think of her every single time I cook something and I hear those cooking sounds. So Brandy, that one's for you. Next, we have our pot with all of the drippings in there, all the font, and we are going to just add in our one onion. Let the onion saute for just a couple minutes, just to kind of soften up and pull up all that goodness off the bottom of the pot. And then we'll deglaze with our beef broth and our soy sauce. All these brown bits on the bottom of the pot, that is called fond, and we want to keep that fond. You never want to wash that away when you're searing something on the stove. Keep that in because that is flavor, just layering on top of each other. So keep that off, and then we want to lift it off the bottom of the pan using some sort of liquid, and that is called deglazing. So I just have two cups of beef broth here, and we are going to deglaze the pot like this. While you pour the liquid in, you wanna scrape off all that goodness off the bottom of the pot. We've got two cups of beef broth in there and one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce. You can also use Worcestershire sauce if you like, but I like using soy sauce because I'm Asian and I always have it and I put it in everything. <laughs> 
Next, I'm gonna add in just one bay leaf. Next, we're gonna just put this meat right in. And make sure you get any juices that may have come out. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Okay, we've got our meat sitting in the cooking liquid and I'm just gonna grab some of those onions and just put them right on top of the meat, just like we did in our crock pot version. Since this is a bigger cut of meat, I'm going to cook this on manual high pressure for 60 minutes with a full natural pressure release. We're gonna press the cancel button to stop the saute and then we're going to put our lid on. Put it on ceiling. And then I'm going to press the meat slash stew button and cook for 60 minutes on high pressure with a full natural pressure release. Oops, there we go. So we'll let this cook and we'll come back in about an hour and a half after it has completely cooked. After these are done cooking, we are going to jump straight into the blind taste test and then I'll show you exactly what they look like, how they slice, and my personal opinion. After that, we will get our final results. If you like this video and you want to see more Instant Pot vs. Crock Pot showdowns, tell me what recipe I should use in the comments below. Make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with all your friends, and subscribe. So we are going to put this to the ultimate husband taste test. I'm gonna put some of the crock pot roast in one side of this plate and the instant pot roast on the other and we'll see which one Brett prefers. Okay guys, it is the moment of truth. It is the unveiling of the instant pot versus crock pot roast. The crock pot has been cooking this roast for eight hours on low and the instant pot has been cooking the roast for one and a half hours total. 60 minutes of that one hour was pressure cooking and then it took about 30 minutes for the pin to drop on a natural pressure release. So first this is what the crock pot roast looks like. Ooh, it smells good. And next, this is what the instant pot roast looks like. Okay, I am going to dish up both of these roasts and then we will have Brett, come and do a blind taste test to see which roast reigns supreme. Okay, we have our special guest. This is my husband, Brett, and he is going to do a blind taste test for us. So, babe, you just tell us what it tastes like, what the texture is like, and then at the very end, you tell us which one you prefer. I can do that. Okay, so go ahead and close your eyes. Tell me when. Okay, I'm just gonna feed this to you. Okay, ready? Open. It was kind of a big bite, sorry. It was kind <laughs> like, of a big bite. <laughs> it might take a minute to chew. There's a lot of flavor in this. Hmm. Yeah, it tastes really good. There's a lot of flavor. It's got plenty to chew on. Um, and I don't know, it's, it tastes like a really good roast. Okay. I really liked it. Okay, sounds good. Okay, this is option two. I'll give you a smaller. Do I need like some coffee beans to smell in between? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay, open up option two. I gave you a smaller bite this time. Mmm. Super flavorful. Softer. It kind of has a little bit more of like a smoky taste almost. It's like a fuller taste for sure. I really like that one. <laughs> okay. Whoa. So this one is already falling apart. It is super tender. The onions are way more intact than the instant pot roast that I can see just straight off the bat. Okay, and then this is the instant pot roast. It's coming out in one large chunk. And the juices in the instant pot roast actually look a lot more diluted 
than in the crock pot, which makes sense because there's no evaporation in the Instant Pot and in the crock pot cooking down and condensing those flavors. It's time to cut into our roast. We are going to start out with the Instant Pot roast first. I'm going to cut it down the middle and try and see how well it will fall apart just to kind of see for comparison's sake. So right off the bat, I can tell this is not quite as tender as the other one. I'm going to just cut it in half because it's not really pulling apart too well. You can see, kind of what that looks like in there. You can see a lot of that connective tissue that we wanted hasn't cooked down all the way quite yet. And there are some parts on the side that are kind of starting to ugh, pull apart. Kind of on the edges here, we have a little bit more shredability like that. And that looks great right there. But it's still pretty tough. There you go. You can tell that the onions are quite a bit softer than the ones that we have in the crock pot. The crock pot ones look kind of like they shrunk a little bit, a lot actually, and the instant pot ones look like they expanded quite a bit. So next we will do our crock pot roast. This is the one that cooked for eight hours on low. Wow, look at that. If we had cooked this for even an hour more, it would be like falling apart. Like we wouldn't have come out in this big chunk. You can see like it's just, just perfect. It's not like total mush, but it has a little bit of, oh my gosh, look at this. Super tender, but it's not mush, like I said, and it has a little bit of, kind of a bite to it still. Okay, open your eyes. Tell us your true feelings. <laughs> true colors. Sorry. Um, number two was definitely better. Number one was really good. Like it had a lot of flavor and there was plenty to chew on. Like uh, it wasn't too chewy and it wasn't too soft. Um, but number two, was pretty much perfect. It was like the Sunday dinner roast that I've always known and loved, but maybe even a little better. So it was really good. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I really liked it. All right, well, I'm going to do a taste test as well. So this was, the first one we had you try was the Instant Pot Roast. Like it's still a great roast, right? I think some people prefer to have like a like a not tough but tougher. Well, it's just got a little more substance. Yeah, to it. like yeah. A, there's a little bit more to chew through. I think that if you like something that you have to slice through, then the instant pot roast is definitely what you want. But oh yeah, yeah, there's a big difference. Yep, <laughs> mm. and it almost has like you know when you have a really good um, like brisket, how it's got that bark oh, yeah. on it. It's kind of got a little bit of that oh, kind yeah. of flavor to it, and it is, it's really good. Guys, these tasted almost completely different, and they use the exact same recipe, so I think we have a clear winner. The, uh, the crock pot takes it. Crock pot takes it, you guys. <laughs> wow. Well done, crock pot. Good game, instant pot, but for the roast, it's just like a night and day difference. It is, metal. It's just a lot more tender. It has a deeper flavor. The time savings is definitely nice, but I mean, if you're going to go through the trouble of making a Sunday roast, something that's special and that's something that you don't have all the time, definitely just take the time to make it in your crock pot. And mm, I think we might have a little bit more. It <laughs> was so good. All right. You may have been surprised, but in this crock pot versus instant pot showdown, the crock pot takes it. Oh, it's so good. I can't wait to eat this later. Mm. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye.